Hello everyone and welcome back to a high level match of StarCraft 2. Now what I've got for you today should be a very interesting game. I think we all know that Raynor is very good when it comes to playing with the Zerg. In case you're unfamiliar, if you just stumbled upon this video for some reason, first off, welcome. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, but he ended up winning IEM Katowice in 2021, making him the world champion of StarCraft 2 last year. And of course, he won that tournament playing Zerg. Over the last six months or so, Raynor has been playing quite a bit of Protoss, even participating in tournaments, playing with the Protoss pieces, and doing very well against some of the very best players in the world. What I've got for you today, as you may have already guessed, spawning right here in the bottom left -hand corner of Tropical Sacrifice with the blue Terran SCVs from Italy, we are looking at Raynor's main command center. Finally living up to his nickname, right? Anyways, his opponent in the opposite corner. With the Red Zerg Drones from Mexico, we are looking at Chem's main hatchery. Alrighty, so I'm very excited to find out exactly where Raynor's Terran is currently at. Chem, um, in case you're unfamiliar, Chem is actually very good. So I haven't covered him all too much on my channel, which really is a bit of a shame, because over the last couple of months, he's been putting in some very solid results, and he's been looking good for quite a long time right now. So, spoiler alert for DreamHack Atlanta, which is currently an ongoing tournament. Basically, it's a couple of different regions where they hold a smaller event, and then all of that leads into an offline finals over at Atlanta. Just a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Chem ended up winning the Latin American region 4-1 over Special in the Grand Finals. Now, Special has basically won the last... I don't know, dozen or so for however long they've been doing these formats for. Uh, Mr. Special is the one dominating the Latin American region. And yeah, it's quite exciting to see that someone else managed to win quite confidently as well. I haven't seen the games admittedly, but yeah, Mr. Cham ended up winning 4-1 in the finals. Certainly showing us that he's currently feeling very comfortable in the Zerg versus Terran matchup. Cham right now to rank 40 in the world overall. Raynor, I don't know. I mean, I know where his Zerk is ranked, it's like top 3 on the planet, but I don't know where his Terran is ranked, I have no idea. I don't think he actually, I don't think he actually ever participated as Terran in a tournament before, or at the very least not that I'm aware of, because Aligalek is not keeping track of his Terran ranking so far. Now I do feel that, well, with a nickname like that, right, and the amount of APM, first and foremost, Raynor's Terran should be very scary. So Raynor is one of those guys, together with Clem, that really come to mind whenever I think of high APM players. So Raynor, especially when playing Zerg, is not, not a stranger to hitting literally 10 buttons a second over the course of a game on average. The guy is incredibly quick. Now obviously with Zerg, you have rapid fire. For example, if you want to... Say you want to make like 20 larva into Zerklings, you just hold down the button. But every single set of Zerklings you create is going to count as an action, so... The, uh, the APM is a little bit inflated, but there's no denying that he's a very, very fast player. And if you ever have a chance to either watch, for example, Clem or, well, Raynor in first person, you'll see what I'm talking about. They're very, very fast on the keyboard. And I've got a feeling that... Like, when you think about it, right? Terran's skill ceiling is incredibly high. Theoretically speaking, especially biological-based armies, and I don't know if he's going to be favoring Terran Mech here or Terran Bio, but Bio armies in particular have a ton of micro potential, and I do feel, especially with the aggression as well, that it really leans into Raynor's playstyle quite a bit. At the very least, you know, if my experience watching him playing Zork and, and Protoss is anything to go off of, I've got a feeling that Terran should be right up his alley as well. The problem, of course, with Terran Bio is that, well, if you make one little misplay, you lose. <laughs> If you try to, uh, yeah, get a good hit in against your opponent's Banelings, you accidentally walk your bio army into the Banelings. Not quite ideal. Anyhow, it's been a triple CC opener right here from our Terran. Triple hatch as well from Chem. Nothing out of the ordinary. No quick Roach Warrants or anything along those lines. I'm assuming it's going to be a lair here in just a moment as well. And then we're going to be seeing the, uh, the Baneling Nest coming down. Either that or he could favor double upgrades first. I haven't seen that many of Chem's games lately, so... We'll see uh, what he's currently favoring, but that is currently the gold standard. Yeah, so we see a lair. We see a second gas geyser. We see a couple of spore crawlers coming up, too. Two spore crawlers in the main base. Interesting. Okay. So, it's a Viking first. That's what he's seen so far. 
The only reason why it would really go double spore in the main base is if you expect your opponent to go battle cruisers. You can sort of play this as well against someone who's going heavy Benshee, but none of that is happening so far. So honestly, that is four spore crawlers that aren't really going to be all too helpful here. Maybe this is just Chem being super safe. Obviously, he knows he's going up against Raynor. He knows that Raynor is very strong, but... You know, it's Cham's main race, right? So he should probably feel confident here, so maybe he doesn't want to take any risks. Anyhow, Queen's currently distracted, busy shooting at that Viking. That does give an opportunity right now for those Hellions to drive into the main base. No creep on the ramp, so it's going to be quite difficult for the Queens to actually cross this, uh, this terrain here. They're going to take forever, and that is going to be a lot of dead drones, I believe. So far, it's quite good, but yeah, this is where a lot of the drones are starting to fall. Nice movement right there from Rainer. Obviously well aware of how this matchup functions from the Zerg's point of view. So he was probably trying to create a distraction with that Viking at the front, and now suddenly, well, the Hellions managed to drive in. It did come at the cost of all the Hellions. Cham on the back of this immediately planted down a Spire. Yeah, so he's he's not in a good spot here. Four Spore Crawlers and then 11 Drones. Really not what you're looking for at all in the early game. I thought for a second maybe Chen was going to play one of those games where he just does not want to take any damage. And, you know, the Spore Crawler situation at the very least indicated that, but he definitely did cut a little bit of Zerkling production, just relying on the Queens to be in the right place at the right time. And you know what? Worst case here as well that the Viking wasn't even sniped. So the Viking, which created the distraction, is still just flapping its little wings. Well, I don't know, boosting its thrusters. I guess it doesn't flap its wings. Anyways, at this point, Stimpak is done. Combat Shield's coming up, plus one, plus one upgrades coming up as well for Raynor. He just now secured the third base, second factory here. Everything's looking very normal. Yeah, we're gonna go into a bio mid game with Widowmine production on the back of this too. <laughs> Raynor being obnoxious with the Viking steal. This is the salty, uh, the, the salt inducing Viking right over here. Just landing it, being a little obnoxious, getting maybe a creep tumor. Maybe not. Okay, well, I don't think it's gonna, yeah, live to tell that too. The real story, though, is right over here. The creep is being pushed back really nicely. Makes it difficult for the Zerg player to continuously defend this region on the map. Eight Mutas are coming up, so Champ favoring that Mutaling Bane army. Very strong for sure. But since Baneling Speed is not done just yet, it's finishing up right now. It's gonna be hard to keep this base alive. Is there enough damage here for the Terran player? Okay, that Widowmine is practically invisible. He does pick up and get on out of there at the very least, but... Comes at the cost of... Oh, good split right there. Comes at the cost of a couple of those meta effects. Those meta effects were just watching the scene, man. Yeah, you definitely want to keep those flying about, huh? That was definitely a, a little bit of an uncomfortable moment. I think the meta effects, though, will be safe. Good Widowmine detonation right there on the Bane Links. Will I say that? No, the Mutas are still here. Target firing down whatever they can. One Medivac still half full of units too. Fourth command center in a lot of trouble. And that's what happens when you hang around with those Medivacs for just a bit too long. You end up losing those units. You end up not being in the right place. And Well, suddenly the Zerk infestation is growing on the other side of the map. Thor is coming up. We don't mind still being produced, so that's nice, I suppose, but... It's gonna take a while to be able to properly and reliably push back that army, and of course, the 4th command center has already been cancelled. Chem right now taking a really nice supply lead. Seems like he's recognizing, though, that he's likely not gonna win with this push, so he's already going back to droning again, but the front door is still wide open, so additional Zerg reinforcements are running in right now. Widowmine's over here, also doing a lot of friendly fire. I would love to see a couple Zerklings, yeah, split off towards the natural here to start working on those SCVs here too. Here's Big Daddy Thor, good split already by Chem. Excellent movement here by him, although he does need to be careful. Okay, as long as the magic box is reasonable, that Thor is not going to be able to deal a lot of damage, and this is now going from bad to worse. 24 SCVs have gone down. And that's a very good amount, considering the amount of economy here that, well, Cham has built up once again. Maybe he lost a bunch of drones in the earlier stages of the match, but at the very least he grabbed all of those Hellions for his troubles. His creep spread is looking stellar, despite the denial here in the middle of the map. Yeah, he's planted down some tumors once again too. The arms of creep are growing all over the map, taking another expansion up north. Plus, he's got full map control right now. Nine overlords may be a little bit overly ambitious, but... 
I guess he's done droning here, so he doesn't really care all too much. One thing, though, that I really, really like here for Rainer is the amount of upgrades that he's got. So plus two, plus two is finishing as Zerk is literally starting 1-1. One, one. These upgrades are super late. Especially when you have a lot of a small unit, right? Those upgrades are obviously going to trigger more frequently. Okay, beautiful retargeting on the Widow Mine. Dealing so much damage there. Okay, plus three already starts up. Yeah, so the damage is going to scale very quickly. It's not so noticeable when you have an army that is, you know, comprised of a bunch of, like, heavy hitters. But every single one of those marines will benefit from the plus two, plus two upgrades. And well, at the same time, all of these zerklings don't have any armor upgrades just yet, so it makes them quite a bit weaker. That being said, Chem is putting his resources into higher tech instead. So if Terran, for example, is still stuck on just playing a bunch of Marines and maybe a couple Marauders here and there, maybe some Widow Mines, maybe a Thor, Ultras are a very real scary option. So maybe that's what he's aiming for right now, because if Terran is not able to really go up towards Ghosts, and Terran usually needs four base economy to properly start producing those units, Ultras can actually catch you off guard all of a sudden. So I wonder if that's maybe why Chem is going straight into a Hive. Alright. Another engagement over here. Ooh, there are Widow Mines here somewhere, aren't there? Yeah, okay. So there, there's 10 Widow Mines out in this map, but... Mostly behind this section. Okay, good hold right there. Chemdo is still maxed out. He should really go straight into 2-2 and Adrenal Glance. Yeah, there's 2-2. Plus two flyer attacks also coming up. So what are we at a hive tech for here, champ? Did we just take a hive just for the hell of it? Okay, there's the adrenal plants. So that is a roughly 40% attack speed improvement on the Zerklings. That's certainly a way to catch up in that department. Now one thing to note, of course, is that this is a very flimsy Zerk army, right? So it's Lingbane Muta. That is one bad Widowmine detonation away from being an absolute disaster. Creep spread is looking absolutely amazing, though, and that's going to make taking those fights significantly easier. It's growing everywhere. Okay. APM-wise? Oh, God. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. These detonations are not good for the Zerg. APM-wise, you can see that Chem is certainly up to par. There's the Ultra Cavern, and even a second Spire, too. Okay. He's got such a good economy here. Careful now, the double Thor drop in the main base! Metavex boosting after these units, while simultaneously also dealing some damage over here in the middle of the map. It does take a little bit for the creep to disappear, so you gotta be so cautious with just walking these units forward. There's another scan. Siege tanks and, or sorry, Widow Mines are already in a good position here, so it's gonna be difficult for the Zerg to properly engage. Terran's maxed out once more. This is not an army that we usually see at this stage in the game, because there's absolutely no ghosts yet. Oh, Banelink's rolling into the Thor, too. Good pickup, Micro, right there by uh, Mr. Rainer. Keeping those units alive, and Zerk is setting up a surround right now, although there's no units running here from the south. That is a little bit of an oversight, I believe. Widow Mines, though, not getting the best of detonations just yet. Excellent splits here from Rainer, keeping a lot of those units alive and getting a very cost-efficient trade. Yeah, that was a phenomenal trade. A lot of that, though, comes down to the 3-3 research. Those units are just so much more tanky. The upgrades make a massive difference. Okay. Still, that was mostly just a trade as far as the armies go. Maybe some creep spread was denied as well, but Champ still has that 89 worker economy and Rainer is at 57. Obviously, as this game progresses, those upgrades are gonna catch up since you can't go any farther than plus three plus three. So Champ right now at 2-2 research already quite a bit better. Kitness plating also coming up, so maybe he's thinking about going for a um, an ultra switch here in just a moment. And when there's no ghosts in the mix, honestly, ultras are really scary. Liberators, ghosts. I mean, I guess Thors and Marauders do decently well, but not ideal. All right. So he's creating a literal minefield out here, forcing the Zerg to take another engagement off creep. Good positioning here by the Terran player, but is it enough? Widow Mine's getting some good detonations once again, but I do believe that eventually this is going to be pulled back, or pushed back, I suppose, by Chem. Oh, well, good detonation right there as well in the Metavex, yeah. Reinhardt not leaving this situation alone just yet. He knows very well that if he does, 
The creep spread is gonna start spreading very quickly once more, but it might be time to give up this location. Interestingly enough, Rainer did just now grab a supply lead. He's not really been building that economy all too much. Now finally adding on additional SCVs, okay. One theme that we saw with his uh, Protoss is that he was making uh, workers like he was a Zerg player. Going up to like 90, 100 probes even. It's not really the case so far in this Terran game, but obviously he ended up losing quite a few of his SCVs. So maybe that doesn't help. Or maybe he just doesn't feel as comfortable playing Terran as he does Protoss. Careful, careful, careful. Good play here though by Champ. Uh, yeah, okay, no, I say that, and of course, immediately we see, uh, oh my god, the hero Ultralisk! <laughs> immediately we see a bunch of Balings rolling into a Thor, which is the last place you want him to go. New expansion acquired on the left side of the map, but if you look at the minimap so far, there's no denying that Terran's got a... Yeah, a much worse economy, right? He really needs to get a Ghost Academy, doesn't he? Okay, well... Maybe Rainer's figured something out with Terran, and he doesn't think he needs a Ghost Academy, but he's seen the Ultras right now for sure. Okay, good pickup once again. Widowmines just constantly dealing damage. Queens cannot transfuse off creep anymore, yeah. So it's gonna be hard to actually bring that Ultra back alive, but it looks like he decided to disengage soon enough. Little Medivac drop over here down south too. That one certainly has killed a lot of workers. Even Hatchery in a little bit of trouble. Don't worry, champ, don't get too attached to this hatch, because I've got a feeling that the units are going to come back in for more in just a moment. He's going to bring some spine crawlers over here. Single widow mine drop over here too, just being as obnoxious as possible. Really? <laughs> yeah, I just move commanded it over there. Another factory coming up, so... No Ghost Academy. No? Am I crazy? Interesting. Maybe the Rainer is doing the no ghost challenge. I expect it. Okay, actually, hold up. Because I think there's going to be a big fight over here. I expected Rainer to play more of a Maru. Or no, no, maybe not Maru. Maybe like a. A Clem slash Bion esque playstyle with loads of multitasking and drops all over the map. But well, Raynor is going more of like the big gay parade pushing style here, which is kind of interesting. Just constantly hitting his opponent in the face with really large armies. Okay, now we're starting to pick up the pacing a little bit with some more multitasking. Okay, Marines over here though immediately have to pay the price for that multitasking as they were not controlled perfectly and the Banelings end up taking them down. One Ultralisk over here with the counterattack, love to see it. But apparently it decides to go back home because it doesn't really doesn't really want to take a lot of chances. By the way, Mr. Cham is using some of the skins. So like I mentioned, I believe I mentioned this, this is a ladder game. And on the ladder, we do see skins being used all the time. Whereas in tournaments, most of the time we just have the standard default skins. Makes the Ultralisks look a little bit funny. I like it actually, I like this Ultra skin quite a bit. I mean, it's a bit cursed, but <laughs> it's a very mechanical looking skin. Okay. Yeah, so just a no ghost challenge. Very interesting. Rainer doing a little bit of creep cleaning. One problem that Terran is going to run into in this game is the fact that there's not a whole lot of resources to mine anymore on their side of the map. I guess the base all the way up here is an option. I guess the base in the middle of the map is an option, but... Yeah, they're all very shaky. Got some mech upgrades coming up as well. Okay. I think a, a Brute Lord transition would not be a bad idea. We have a Greater Spire already done. We've got some good upgrades for those flyers too. Yeah, there it is. 12 Brute Lords coming up. Now, this is a dangerous spot though, because it's going to take a while. Okay, at this point, Rainer does see at least one or two of them. So he knows that that is the transition. There's not a lot of anti-air available just yet. Well, now he certainly knows, even if he missed the very first time that that happened. Okay, I was gonna say that maybe Champ should have morphed him in over in the main base a little bit further back, but it looks like he is going to be fine. 
Brute Lords are very strong, but of course they're also very immobile. So even though he's going to win a straight up battle just fighting with the Brute Lords, there's a very good chance that Raynor doesn't want to take a straight up battle. Once again, a drop heading down south. Now the Brute Lords are going to be able to push back this army, but the hatchery, of course, was already destroyed. And you know what? Yeah, we can just bypass this army altogether. Maybe a little bit uh, YOLO. Oh my god, that was so close. There are a few Corruptors out, if I'm not mistaken, but apparently they were preoccupied on the other side of the map. Bypassing the Brutes altogether and going straight for the Zerg's main base. Here's another Terran army. Small little hit squad heading on over towards uh, the fourth base here. They were met with the Brute Lords, however, so apparently... Yeah, he's just gonna be content right here with dealing damage. At the same time, bottom right in corner, one Ultra is gonna try and defend against this Terran drop as well, and it looks like that will be the Knight. Hive is already gone, though. This is quite annoying. This is a Marauder group, obviously, right? So now Ghosts are coming up. Okay. Basi basically, Chem is saying, yo, bro, you gotta play Ghosts. Raider wanted to play the, uh, the entire game without any Ghosts, but he really needs to. I mean, they're too good to just, you know, forgo, I guess. Like, if you don't play them, Infestors are a problem, Vipers are a problem, Brute Lords are a problem, Ultras are a problem, and Ghosts are good against all of that. Okay, so, eventually that army got the Knight. Expansion up north also once again got the Knight. And a new command center is trying to be acquired here in the top left. Keep in mind that those mineral fields are running low right now here for Raynor. He's getting a lot of worker kills, actually. Yeah, not bad at all. 70 workers have actually been killed in total in this game. All right, and this is kind of what I expected, you know? Very low HP armies, YOLOing around the map. Like, let's just say that I would rather be a Marine in Maru's army than in Raynor's, okay? It just seems that Maru takes care of his units a little bit more. Now the, uh, the Zerk army, though, okay, he was at the very least thinking about going across the map, and I think he should continuously move there, because if Brutes are gonna be, de yeah, if, if the Brutes are in, in charge of defending the base down south, they're gonna get there after all of the expansions get destroyed. They're just too damn slow. All right, well, he's gonna try. Vikings are coming up as well, but that expansion is already gone, and I've got a feeling that those Terrans are gonna dip on out of there. Whew. Okay. New expansion acquired up north. No planetary here just yet. Actions permitted, moving up. Average actions per minute, that is. Well, I guess the absolute actions per minute as well. So the middle of the map should be quite defendable. I, I don't like Brute Lords on this map too much, though. The map is just, like, it's too wide, if that makes any sense. Like, the there's too much terrain to cover. Like, you can maybe maneuver the Brute Lords around in this section of the map. Kind of, right? But... Any further than that, they're gonna be out of position most of the time. So I think what Rainer here is doing is focusing on the... Yeah, the right side of the map, the bottom right corner, and I don't think that's a bad idea. Because every time you move over here, like, you could hit the northern section of the map while simultaneously hitting the southern section, and the Brute Lords are just gonna be kind of caught in the middle of nowhere. I say that, now the Vikings are moving forward. Okay, straight through the center of the map. Rainer playing his army, uh, or his opponent's army movement here like a fiddle. Going into the Infester, going into the Viper right now, Chem is building up a much stronger army. One problem that Chem is running into right now, though, is money. He doesn't have a lot of resources anymore. Rainer also secured the base in the center of the map. This is one of the many orbital commands that he's been building here. An additional armory coming up, and apparently we are now making the Fulan Terran mech transition. So the ultimate Terran army is Ghost Mech. Problem is getting there. Need a lot of economy to pull that off, and apparently Raynor right now, after being maxed on that bio army for a while and finally mixing in the ghost, I think this is maybe the time where he's gonna go into that, well, mass siege tank Thor Hellbat type of force. If you need to take a straight on engagement against Brute Lords, that's certainly a good option, but this is a very scary army. Keep in mind though, ghosts have a skill called EMP that allows them to remove energy out of those Zerg spellcasters. And, well, all three Zerg spellcasters are present here in this battle. Oh, careful! Bainlink's still very dangerous. So if Chem can get a good fungal growth... Yeah, there it is. That's the wombo combo of the swarm, baby. Fungal growth into Parasitic Bomb. It deals a ton of damage, and it certainly looks very scary. You can get rid of those Terran, well, ground units, air units, everything, pretty easily. 
just having this combination of units and hitting the right fungals and the right parasitic bombs at the right time. Okay, so apparently Cham is now mostly content mining these two bases only, which I am not 100% convinced by. It's just hard to actually take control of the map when you're Brute Lord heavy, right? So maybe that was the idea from Raynor. Try to force out Brute Lords and then try to abuse the Brute Lords against them. Because the Brute Lords were good against the initial bio armies, but not ideal against the rest of it. There's the EMP improvement. Yeah, there's definitely some some room for improvement. I guess. Oh, this store is stuck. All right, there you go. There's definitely some room for improvement, I think, for uh, for Rainer's Terran. It just doesn't look as well-oiled as his Protoss and Zerg. But obviously, that's just a matter of practice. Anyway, finally, Zerg is, yeah, finding a little bit of, of damage here on the other side of the map. Love to see that. Good split. Very good split, actually. Getting rid of that little hit squad. Orbital Command flying on over towards the top left. But this little army here has been tasked with trying to pull back the Brute Lord army. Uh, dancing off the creep as much as possible. I think maybe Zerk wants to take this base instead. I think that makes a lot of sense. If Zerk is going to try and take the northern base, however, I think Terran should start taking all the bases down south. And there's a whole lot more money in these two than there is up north. So, I'm liking this position here for Raynor more and more. Okay, could have finished that one off, but I guess it's gonna burn to death eventually. Just wants to give the, uh, the command center pilots a nice view right over there. A tropical sacrifice is gonna be made. Maybe they'll find an SCV to repair them back up here in just a moment. Now the Thor army, though, is moving across. Any bio unit that's sacrificed gets replaced by either a ghost or, for example, a Thor. And that is not a bad situation to be in. Yep. So I like this. Are we gonna go double planetary? Definitely an option. The Brute Lords aren't really gonna be able to make their way down there very easily anyways. Okay, Cham is taking the base over here. Essentially, all the units right now that uh, Mr. Rainer's got, though, they're countering, yeah, Brute Lords. He's got 69 SCVs, so that's pretty nice. Losing a bunch of units here on the right side of the map. Honestly, the Terran army doesn't look that menacing here. If you just look at the straight numbers, right? 10 Ghosts, 3 Marines, 4 Marauders. I guess the Thors are incredibly supply-dense. <laughs> yeah, that... Dense? I don't know if that's the correct word. Anyways, they're very heavy in supply. They're very thick. They're like thick with like four C's and spaces in between the letters and all uppercase and all that. Here comes the Terran Pain Train. Keep in mind the mechanical units here are not as well upgraded. Do we have Neural Parasite, by the way, for the... No, we do not have Neural Parasites here for the Infestors. I wouldn't mind seeing that. But yeah, pretty Zurigy approach here from Raynor, playing Terran. Just YOLOing in a lot of units. Establishing a superior economy, always being the main goal. That is definitely a theme in Raynor's games. Trying to get that big economy going is definitely something he's always aiming for. A little hit squad here, okay. That should not have happened. Anyways, that's because there's a... Potential fight happening right now in the center of the map, and yes, it looks like we are gonna clash. A couple of blinding clouds shut down this army for some time, but I think this is an excellent engagement here for the Mexican Zerk. Getting a lot of work done. The Brute Lords normally get countered by the Thors, but because of that engagement and because of the blinding clouds, it is indeed Chem who takes a lead after that engagement. Lovely work. Rainer still has a lot of money in the bank, however. I can Chem really capitalize on this. Chem is essentially broke. Got a lot of gas, but not a lot to spend it on. I think it's time to go, dude. He did end up losing a bunch of his spellcasters. Yeah, all of the vipers at this point are gone. Zerkin counterattack. Love to see that. One Thor being very ambitious. Maybe he can throw a fungal. Yeah. Gonna need to see that fungal a little bit sooner. No cloak energy anymore on those ghosts, so. They're gonna get picked off. Now the Brute Lords have arrived. Okay. 
So this is where things get very scary here for Terran. Reinforcing units are popping out of all of those Terran production structures, but they're not coming out fast enough. Zork is starting to overwhelm the natural right now. This is the soft underbelly of the Terran. If you can get on top of all of these production structures, then suddenly Terran, it doesn't matter how much economy they have, suddenly Terran will just end up losing the match because they can't produce fast enough. It is a one-way trip though. Usually when you move off creep with this type of army, Brute Lords are too slow to go back home. They don't get a creep boost or whatever, but obviously, uh, yeah, they're far away from home is what I'm getting at. Plus three may very well get denied as well. Ooh, I don't know. Anyways, EMP does shut down. Okay, no, he did finish up the plus three. That's nice. Anyways, EMP does shut down these infestors. Careful, though, because without the infestors, all of this becomes a lot more tricky. Planetary Fortress down south, taking a lot of damage, and I believe it will be killed. At the same time, over in the natural of the Terran player, we do see some very good snipes. Thor's now dealing damage from a distance as well. A couple of Thor's coming in from the flank. And I think that does mean that eventually the Brute Lord army gets cleaned up. And that's the problem with Brute Lords and Queens. Like, they work well together, but only on creep. As soon as you bring them off creep, the Queens can no longer transfuse, and you don't have enough vision to see if you're getting surrounded. So Raynor actually, well, I mean, he wins the fight, but does he win the war? Because he just lost pretty much all of the new economy that he had down south. At this point, Raynor's income has been absolutely shattered. 55 minerals a minute? Chem doesn't have a lot either, but at the very least he's mining. And I believe that's most important right now. Not bringing in a lot of gas makes a lot of sense. Then again though, Rainer's army is still pretty significant. 106 army supply versus 96. Zerg though is producing and going in for the counterattacks, okay? These are fully upgraded Zerglings, so they will be able to bite their way through one of those supply depots pretty quick, and that means that the main base is wide open. Although, well, those Hellions have something to say for the matter. They're gonna try and defend. Anyways, at the same time, Rainer is jumping on top of that economy here of Champ. Is there enough for the Terran player from Italy to deny that economy? I think so. Yeah, I believe so. Chem has not taken the time to take a base down south. As a matter of fact, this is being scouted by Raynor, which is really good. But we do have a main engagement right now. Is there enough for the Zerg to push all of this back? Those Thors dealing a lot of damage. Infestors derping forward as well. Not quite where you want to see them. And I've got a feeling, yeah, with all of that Terran supply caught up in units that can fight... And a lot of the supply of Chem caught up in Corruptors that do not participate. It is indeed Raynar playing with the Terran units who obtains the victory over Chem. Hey, if you made it all the way until the end of this video, please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button. It really does help if you really enjoyed watching. Consider hitting the subscribe button as well. That way you get notified as soon as future videos go live. I try to upload pretty much every single day.